Lesson 141. The genitive case in context. Lisa, if I could just have my way, I would make each German article different. <laughs> so you could always tell them apart and always know exactly what case they are. Yes. But that's not the way it is. I think when they invented German, they tried to make it hard just to confuse me personally. <laughs> and so der is dative and genitive for feminine nouns. Right. So that could provide some confusion. For example, we have a couple of example sentences here like das Auto der Frau. Mm -hmm. In the context of a longer sentence, like the next example, ich kaufe der Frau ein Auto. Lisa, if you were to see der Frau just by itself in a sentence, you might have to do a double take and think to yourself, well, is that dative or is it genitive? Because it could be either one. I suppose you have to look at the context around it to see what's happening in the sentence, right? Yes. So, as we've mentioned before, try to use all your tools you have. The context, use your grammar and vocabulary knowledge. Here, it doesn't help us too much because we know it's die Frau feminine, but here in the sentence it's der Frau, so all we know is either dative or genitive. So it's really the context and the word order which are the tools we could use to make sure we get the right idea what the sentence means. We can see that der Frau is the first noun mentioned and then ein Auto comes after it. If der Frau was genitive, it would be the second noun. It would follow whatever it is possessing. So here we have the dative case. So you're telling us that when a noun in the genitive is possessing another noun, it comes after it. Right. We could modify the sentence and say, Ich kaufe das Auto der Frau. Then it's a different story. Das Auto comes first. And der Frau is coming after. Then you'd be saying, I am buying the woman's car. Exactly. So word order can make a big difference. Also, just the meaning of the sentence. If you're saying, ich kaufe, that could possibly set you up for an indirect object. Right. Which uses the dative case. For example, der Frau. So one thing we're trying to talk about in this lesson is narrowing things down, narrowing down the number of possibilities that something could be. If you see der Frau, you have a couple of possibilities. It could be dative or it could be genitive, and then the wording around it will narrow it down. So if you know the forms really well, if you know the genders of all the nouns, if you know the forms of all the articles, that sets you up to quickly narrow things down and start to decipher what these sentences are saying as you read, right? Right. And we have a couple of examples here. If you see der Mann, there's one thing it could definitely be, and there are some things that it just could not possibly be. And same for der Frau. It could be this, it could be that, but there are also some things it just absolutely cannot be. And the better you get with the forms, the more you'll be able to quickly narrow these things down and really get cooking with understanding what the text is saying. And furthermore, you should practice these exercises in a spoken context as well. It's great to read them over and over, but also there's a pathway for you towards speaking. And that, for me, that's largely first by learning what the words mean, but then getting out the recordings and listening to them over and over and over. And as you listen to them repeatedly, that's going to propel you into speaking because pretty soon you're going to be able to start mouthing those same sentences and saying those same things that you've heard over and over. So as you go along and you try to internalize the patterns of German, the feeling that comes with the different cases and the way the cases are used, be sure to look at this language from the perspective not only of a written language, but also listening and speaking. Be sure to experience the language in all those ways.